Covalent bonds form when nonmetals share electrons to achieve a stable electron configuration. We call these compounds molecules. The chemical behavior of these molecules is determined by their shape and polarity. In this video, we'll learn how to identify the shapes or geometries that molecules form, and how to use these geometries to determine a molecule's overall polarity. Lewis structures show how valence electrons are organized around the atoms within a molecule. Around the central atom in a structure, we call the electrons that are grouped in bonds or lone pairs electron domains. For example, the central sulfur atom in sulfur dioxide has three electron domains, including the double bond, lone pair of electrons, and single bond. The electrons within these domains are constantly repelling each other, pushing the domains to arrange themselves in three-dimensional space to minimize this repulsion and maximize the angle between each bond. We can analyze a structure's electron domains to help predict the shape around the central atom. This is called valence shell electron pair repulsion, or VSEPR Vesper theory. To understand Vesper theory, we'll analyze the relationship between a molecule's number of electron domains and its corresponding geometry and bond angles. The two descriptions we'll use for a molecule's shape are called its electron geometry and molecular geometry. Electron geometry describes the shape of all electron domains in three-dimensional space. However, when a molecule is viewed, the non-bonding electron pairs aren't visible, despite their influence on the structure through the repulsion of the other electron domains. The shape formed by just the atoms in the molecule is called its molecular geometry. Let's begin by looking at the Lewis structures of three molecules that each have four electron domains. We have methane, ammonia, and water. While each of these molecules have the same number of valence electrons available for bonding, they'll each share their electrons in different ways. The carbon in methane, for example, achieves its octet structure through four bonds, whereas the nitrogen and ammonia has three bonds and one non-bonding pair of electrons and the oxygen and water has two bonds and two pairs of non-bonding electrons. Let's start our investigation with methane. This is a good place to begin as methane doesn't contain any non-bonded electron domains. Because of this, its electron geometry and molecular geometry are both described as tetrahedral, representing the shape created by all four electron domains in three-dimensional space. It's important to note that atoms whose electron domains are all bonded will have the same electron and molecular geometry. Let's look at ammonia next. Ammonia replaces one of our four electron domains with a lone pair of electrons. Notice how the electron geometry remains constant with methane, as they have the same total number of domains. However, the shape of the atoms in the molecule can be described as trigonal pyramidal due to the presence of the lone pair of electrons above nitrogen. Water replaces another of our four domains with a lone pair of electrons. Its electron geometry remains constant as tetrahedral, as it retains a total of four domains, but its molecular geometry can now be identified as bent, as the three atoms form an angular line. The number of lone pairs of electrons in a structure will also have an impact on the structure's expected bond angles. Take a tetrahedral for example. The expected bond angles of a tetrahedral are each 109.5 degrees. However, when we replace one of our domains with a lone pair of electrons, we see a decrease in the measured bond angle. 109.5 degrees decreases to 107. Replacing a second domain decreases the bond angle even further, from 107 degrees to 104.5. This is because each additional lone pair of electrons will occupy a bit more space than the electrons stored in bonds, and as a result, will cause an increased repulsion with the bonding electrons that will push the bonds inward, decreasing their bond angles. We see these bond angles show up in our structures for methane, ammonia, and water with water having the smallest bond angle, as it has the most non-bonded pairs of electrons, and methane with the largest bond angles, 
as each of its domains are bonded. To further our understanding of molecular geometries, let's briefly examine molecules with three electron domains by taking a look at methanol and ozone. Starting with methanol, the central carbon has three electron domains. Note that the double bond only counts as one electron domain and not two. The greatest separation of each of the three domains occurs on a single plane, creating bond angles of 120 degrees and the shape of a flat triangle. The electron and molecular geometries for methanol will be the same as there are no lone pairs of electrons. These geometries are aptly described as trigonal planar. The ozone molecule also has three electron domains, and as a result will have a trigonal planar electron geometry. As with the tetrahedral molecules of ammonia and water, the non-bonding electron pair seen in ozone does indeed affect its molecular geometry. The molecule of ozone appears bent, with a bond angle of about 117 degrees, slightly less than the expected 120. This is again due to the increased repulsion of the lone pair of electrons on the central oxygen atom. We can organize possible molecular geometries into a chart that allows us to see the relationship between electron domains and the number of lone pairs around a central atom. Here are the molecular geometries for three and four electron domains. We also have a row for two electron domains. An example of this would be carbon dioxide, CO2. Carbon dioxide has two domains around its central carbon atom. Vesper theory tells us that the molecule will appear linear with a bond angle of 180 degrees to achieve maximum separation between the two electron domains. Molecular geometry will play a large role in a molecule's overall polarity and, as a result, how it interacts with other compounds. Within a covalent compound, its bonds are classified as polar or nonpolar, based on their differences in electronegativity. Polar bonds create partial positive and negative charges, called bond dipoles. We could represent these dipoles with an arrow pointed toward the more electronegative element, with a notch added to the opposite side of the arrowhead, noting the partially positive side of the bond. While individual bonds can be polar, polar bonds don't always cause an entire molecule to have a dipole moment. It is instead the presence and orientation of these bonds, determined by the molecule's geometry, that will cause bond dipoles to either cancel each other out or add together. Let's dive into this by looking at two molecules that have polar bonds, but are overall considered to be nonpolar. To start, carbon tetrachloride has four polar bonds. Its tetrahedral structure points the individual bond dipoles of each carbon to chlorine in opposite directions. Being pulled with equal force in opposing directions, these electron dipoles will cancel each other out, making carbon tetrachloride a nonpolar molecule. The same is true of carbon dioxide. The carbon oxygen bond is also considered polar. Taking a linear molecular geometry, the dipole moments between each carbon to oxygen bond will pull in opposite directions with equal force. These dipoles cancel each other out, making carbon dioxide a nonpolar molecule. Now let's take a look at some polar molecules. We'll start by replacing one chlorine atom in carbon tetrachloride with a hydrogen atom, creating trichloromethane, known commonly as chloroform. The carbon-hydrogen bond is generally considered to be nonpolar, due to the small difference in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen. With the lack of a fourth dipole moment, the carbon to chlorine dipoles no longer cancel each other out in our tetrahedral shape. Because electrons are being pulled in one shared direction, which we can show with an overall molecular dipole in red, trichloromethane is considered to be a polar molecule. Taking another look at methanol, the two carbon-hydrogen bonds are considered nonpolar, while the carbon-to-oxygen bond is considered polar. The dipole moment created by the carbon-oxygen bond doesn't cancel out with anything else in the trigonal planar structure. This will create an overall dipole moment pointing towards oxygen, making methanol a polar molecule. Finally, in ammonia, we have polar hydrogen to nitrogen bonds. The lone pair of electrons on the central nitrogen atom gives this structure a trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry. 
The movement of the lone pair away from the bonding electrons is further exaggerated by the stronger pull that the nitrogen has on the bonding electron pairs relative to hydrogen. The bond dipoles created by the hydrogen to nitrogen bond point in and up toward nitrogen. The shared upward direction of these dipoles gives ammonia an overall dipole moment, making it a polar molecule. Not only does the nature of covalent bonding alter the properties of different substances, but variations in covalent bonding can alter the properties of the same substance. With its four valence electrons, carbon can bond in different ways, creating different forms of the same element called allotropes. The three different allotropes of carbon are graphite, diamond, and fullerene. Each carbon and graphite forms a trigonal planar geometry, creating sheets of repeating hexagonal shapes. Layers of these graphite sheets stack together and are held in place by weak London dispersion forces. Graphite is a good conductor of electricity, it's very stable, and is used in the core of pencils and as a lubricant due to the ability of sheets of graphite to slide past one another. In diamond, each carbon atom is bonded to four other carbons in a tetrahedral geometry. Diamond is considered to be a network covalent solid, and is the hardest substance known with a very high melting point. Like graphite, the foururene arrangement of carbon atoms is also trigonal, with each carbon bonded to three others. However, the bonding is not quite planar, as the structure forms a sphere of 60 carbon atoms resembling a carbon soccer ball. Foururenes are semiconductors, and are very light and strong with a low melting point. The application for the different allotropes of carbon are widespread, varied, and ever-increasing due to the unique properties of the different covalent bonding arrangements. In summary, the repulsion between bonded and non-bonded valence electrons and covalent structures causes the molecules to take shapes, known as their electron and molecular geometry. Different varieties of shapes within the same element create allotropes. Within bonds of these molecules, electrons can be pulled toward one atom more than another, creating bond dipoles. If there is a high amount of symmetry in the force and direction of these bond dipoles, they can cancel each other out. If not, they add together in one direction, creating polar molecules with an overall dipole moment. Learning about the geometry and polarity of covalent compounds is vital to understanding the chemical behavior of covalent molecules and the intermolecular forces that attract them to each other.